What random fact could one day save someone's life? When there's a tornado in front of you and it seems to be standing still, it's coming at you. A long time ago, I used to work part-time as a maintenance man at a bowling alley. I wanted to warn you that each lane has this big arm that controls the tweezers, which is the machine that picks up the pins and puts them in place. Its power is so enormous that it can go through the skittles without stopping and break it in half. Therefore, under no circumstances should you run and fooling around near skittles. It could cost you your life. Need to break car window? Then aim not at the center, where the hardest glass is, but at the edges and corners. A friend of mine who's a fireman told me that. And a car stereo salesman told me that. If you are lost, but have your cell phone with you, try calling 911, even if it shows there's no connection. Your emergency call will be routed through any available connection. This includes not only your cellular carrier, but also emergency channels and any available private networks, military or industrial, agricultural, etc. 911. You called at 911. What's your emergency? I, lost in the woods, tell my mom I won't make it to dinner tonight. And another thing. If you're in a foreign country and you don't know their emergency number, try dial 911-999 or 112, depending on what your country's emergency number is. Usually you'll still be connected to local expert services through these numbers, even if they have a different number. Ideally, of course, learn the number of the place where you are. But if you don't have that information, try numbers you already know. If you are being chased by a polar bear, take off something and throw it under its feet and keep running. Polar bears have a pronounced attention deficit disorder. Before it continues to chase you, it will scrutinize everything you throw at it. In these situations, it's up to you to decide which is worse, being mauled to death by a bear or hypertension. There's a difference in what you throw first. A bear would be more interested in a Gucci jacket or North Face in case of hypertension. If a person is shivering, equal sign unpleasant, but he will be okay. Warm him up. If a person is silent and falls asleep, equally fucked. Body surrenders. If a person takes off his clothes, equally very fucked. In the last stages of hypertension, a paradoxical undressing occurs. As the person's nerve endings are damaged, he loses his mind and becomes incredibly hot. He tries to cool down, strips naked, and freezes to death. If you are swimming in the pool and you feel a metallic taste, rather get out of the pool. There's a short circuit somewhere in the water. That's why I always taste the water before I get in the pool. It's my way of checking to see if someone's been in there. It's usually clear after about 150 milliliters. By the way, the stronger the chlorine taste in the pool, the more sweat and urine in it. If you just mix water and chlorine, there is no odor. If you feel like you're having a heart attack and reach for an aspirin, be sure to chew it. Aspirin helps with heart attack? Didn't know, thanks for sharing. Yes, it keeps platelets from clotting and it usually doesn't affect a clot that is already formed, but it saves you from new clots. We used to have to take four of 81 milligram pills. The new standard is two of 81 milligrams, two little blue pills. Changed, at least that's the standard we have in Canada. If you get stuck in a straggler, don't panic and try to swim back to shore. Instead, swim parallel to the shore until you get out of the current. Waves hitting the shore, it's normal. A small calm stretch of water that has waves crashing around the edges, it is not normal. That's exactly where the rebound currents are. Brown coconuts contain oils that cause dehydration. So it's better to drink milk from green coconuts, although brown ones can be useful too. You can burn their shells to repel mosquitoes. If you ever encounter a mountain lion, don't turn your back on it. As long as it can see your face and eyes, it won't attack. I recently watched a show where they threw one in the middle of the wilderness. To scare away mountain lions, he always wore a hat that had toy eyes in the back. Wait, that actually works? If so, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, some African tribes do the same thing with masks. They wear them backwards to keep predators away. There's a region in India that used to do the same thing for tigers, but the tigers began to realize they were being tricked. I read it here a long time ago. Fortunately, it hasn't come in handy so far. If your feces or vomit looks like coffee grounds, go to the hospital right away. There's a good chance you're bleeding internally. What if I threw up because I ate a pound of coffee grounds? Then you need to see a psychiatrist immediately. This is what the international SOS signal looks like. Three dots, three dashes, three dots. If all you can do is nod, then where the dashes are, tap more slowly to somehow separate them from the dots. Modified. My grandfather taught me that when I was six. For some reason, I've carried this knowledge through my whole life. If you are lost and you have a firearm, fire three shots five seconds apart to report a disaster. 
Let's say you are in a situation where a power line has fallen near you and you are on the ground with 1000 volts and somehow still breathing. To get out of there. Don't try to walk or run. Either jump like a hare or move without taking your feet off the ground. Because the confirmation of electric current is based on potential difference. If you just walk, the potential difference between your feet will be enough to electrocute you. But if you jump with your feet together or walk while keeping your feet off the ground, there's a chance you'll get out safely. If a person is pretending to want to fight, yelling and making sudden hand movements, chances they are just trying to scare you. If the person is walking slowly towards you and there is not a single emotion on their face, run for your life. I grew up in a terrible neighborhood, I'd have to say that's about right. And I've heard that if a person repeats the same words of a phrase over and over again, they are about to lash out on you. It's like their brain blacks out and they can no longer think rationally. If you live in a cold climate, always carry a candle from a warmth survival kit with you when traveling. One candle is enough to keep you from freezing to death. Some of these candles can burn until 36 hours. If you find yourself in a building with a fire, move in a crouched position. The air you can breathe is closer to the floor. In addition to this, never ever open doors abruptly in a fire. If there is a fire on the other side, guess what will come into your room? First, touch the handle with the back of your palm. If it's hot, you'll instinctively move your hand away and the burn will be on the back side. If you grasp the handle as you normally would, you may hurt your hand and lose the ability to grasp objects. We firefighters are always taught to look around the room with the back of the palm. This is primarily because of the possibility of electrocution. If you grab an outlet and you get an electric shock, chances are your muscles will contract and you won't be able to let go. If you touch the outlet with the back of your hand, you'll just be able to put it away in case of an emergency. If the room smells strongly of fish, check the outlets, unplug all your plugged in devices. That could save you from a fire. I don't get it. Electrical problems smell like fish? That's what I had yesterday. The floating plastic really smells like fish. At first I thought someone died in our ventilation system. After I smelled this odor, I was advised to walk around the house and touch the outlets. It turned out that one of them was very hot. I took it apart and found that one wire had burned through the insulating material and was starting to melt the plastic. One of the first signs of a heart attack that is little talked about. A severe upset stomach. For us, as anxious people, it is normal. About a month ago, my dad and I were driving home and spotted some deer. My dad said, If you see a deer run out in front of you on the road, it's better to just run into it than to try to dodge and fly into a ditch. But if there's a moose in front of you, you better steer and fly off the road. Hitting a moose is like hitting a brick wall. I don't think he's ever hit a moose or even seen a moose, but I still think I could use that advice someday. Master the Heimlich technique, if you like to eat alone. For if you suddenly choke, no one will come to your aid. Clench your hand into a fist, put your fist against your stomach, lean on your fist, and with a powerful upward thrust, squeeze your fist into your stomach. If you are lost in the woods for several days, when you are rescued, do not impose too much on food and water. Such a drastic strain on the body can be fatal. For those wondering, it's called renewed eating syndrome. A bunch of Holocaust survivors died after their liberation for this reason. They went from complete starvation to suddenly their abundance of food. If you're chilling on the beach, and then you see the sea suddenly beginning to recede, get out of there as soon as you can. There's a tsunami coming. If you can see waves in the distance, it's too late. Wait, those aren't mountains. Rule of three. You can survive three minutes of heavy bleeding, three minutes without air, three minutes in ice water. You can survive three hours of extreme heat or cold. You can survive three days with water. You can survive three weeks without food. So don't be in a hurry to die. If you've been without food for 20 days, you have another day in reserve. If you are indoors and you smell roasted almonds, even though no one near you is roasting almonds, get out. That's the smell of cyanide. A pastor from my church told me a story about how he was once crossing a river in Africa and a crocodile grabbed his leg. The croc dragged him under the water and the pastor probably would have drowned there, but luckily he used to watch the crocodile hunter and knew what to do. He remembered an episode in which Steve Irwin showed that there was a very sensitive valve in the crocodile's mouth, and pressing it would open the crocodile's mouth and release whatever was in it. So my pastor reached into the crocodile's mouth, found the valve, pressed it, and now he's alive, thanks to Steve Irwin. Modified. Wow. I wasn't expecting this kind of response. If I can, I'll be sure to attach a picture of the leg after all that happened. He was a missionary in Africa for six years in the early 2000s, 
and needed to travel between two extremely poor settlements because no one had boats there. The only way to do it was to wade across a river. He's the toughest guy I've ever met I've ever met. Modified too. And here's a picture of his leg. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments below the video, you can write what random fact do you know that could save someone's life one day. And don't forget to watch our other episodes. That's it. Bye-bye.